now. All right. Hi there, everyone. I'm Trisha Clements. I'm going to go ahead and share my PowerPoint presentation with you all and get started. So um, I'm Trisha Clements with yourbizwatchdog.com, helping small businesses get bound online. And I help small businesses primarily with their Google My Business. That's one of my biggest focuses, um, that local SEO. And I see that Ray uh, had his seatbelt on, so that's good. You guys um, put your seatbelt in because we're going to be moving fast this morning. Uh, wanted to go over a lot of things with your business's online presence, local search and online reviews, and of course, Google My Business. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you all about is your business's online presence. So this is one of my little pet peeves um, that I always, always like to, uh, to talk about. And that is saying that you have to have a place online that you own and control to send your customers, clients, potential customers. Um, you really, really need to have that place because um, I, I see a lot, that's one of the problems I see is a lot of people, uh, customers, they'll, they'll send people to a site that they don't own. But the whole point of SEO is getting your business found and then converting that to a customer. And it's a long game. So you're always improving it. So you don't want to spend all your time and money sending people to a place that someone else owns. So own it, own your business. Come on. Um, the main thing is, um, even if you don't, aren't, so last year I rebranded and I didn't take time to do a full blown website last year. I had a landing page set up. So even if you're going to just do a landing page um, that you're going to have set up, have a place that you own. I did now. Thankfully, I got my new website launched. Um, but sometimes, um, no matter what the reason, you might not have your full website ready to go. Put, get something up there with your information and on a, on a domain that you own. Because if you can shop on Amazon, you can buy your domain, okay? It's easy. You, you go put your credit card in like you do on Amazon and buy that domain. You want to make sure that you are the legal owner on that domain. So um, go ahead, make sure you're the owner on your domain. Um, again, so I really... Um, I, I love Google My Business, um, and, but you don't own that. You don't own your social media. You don't control what's on them. You never know when something they they might have your account suspended. You you know all the stuff people on Facebook getting suspended. Uh, Google My Business. There are lots of times your accounts get suspended. You don't have any control about what people um, how they're showing your business on there. You can optimize, but things are changing all the time. They can remove your listings, your reviews. Um, you need to have that website, that place that you own online for your clients. So uh, even if uh, a lot of times some, some people say, well, I sell a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace, Instagram, Amazon, any place like that. So I'm going to send my clients there. The problem with that is, is that you don't own those places. And again, they can be shut down and then you won't have any contact with your customers, potential customers. Um, so that's why it's really important that you own your website and have a place that you're sending people. That's the website that you're going to be giving to everybody to find you. So because from that, I want to talk about your online presence. What do you look like? What does your business look like when uh, people Google it? And this is even, I have a lot of people coming in and they say, well, 90% um, of my business is referrals. So I'm not really sure that my, I need to really focus about what my business looks like online. That is, is not true, even if 90% of your business is referrals. Because I will tell you, even if it's a referral, people are going to Google your business before they contact you. They're going to be Googling it. Um, I do it all the time. I get a referral and it's like, well, before I um, check that out, I want to go ahead and, and Google and see what's out there about them before I call them. People do that. They're going to, um, to Google you and see what you look like. So you've got to care about what your business looks like online, um, even if it's a referral. So let's take a look and see. I want to first show you desktop. 
So I went ahead and Googled myself. So I say Google your business, just your business name, put it in Google. And this again is the desktop. I'm going to show both desktop and mobile because you need to be concerned about both. Um, you know, Google is doing um, mobile first a search indexing. So you need to know so many people are doing mobile phone searches. You need to be aware of what you look like on both. So here on the left, you see you've, I've got my website comes up, then Facebook. I might not be on Facebook all the time, but Facebook is a, is a big one. It's number two. The second one here is my old website that I have uh, still have up. And of course, I haven't been updating it, so it says it's not really friendly. Oops. Uh, but I'm focusing on my new website. That's why I haven't messed with it. Then, of course, you've got all these other places, MapQuest, Better Business Bureau, Bright Locals, Agency Directory. Um, all these others. Over here on your right is your Google Knowledge Panel. This is all my Google My Business stuff. I've optimized this so you see all this information about my business on the right. Now let's scroll down and see the end of page one. You've still got things here with um, a few things. I've also got my chat with Trisha. That's my, um, my, my link that I have uh, to, to book a call with me. Then here on the right is the rest of your Google Knowledge Panel. You'll see reviews, description. These are my posts that I added. People also search for. All of this here is Google My Business. So let's go back. You've got information here. Again, this is desktop. The whole right side here is Google My Business when people are looking you up. So that you really need to know what your business looks like online. Now let's look at it on desktop. This is a huge difference. Uh, I'm sorry, on your phone. It's a huge difference from your desktop. So I went ahead and put your biz watchdog in on my phone. Look at all, all this whole part here is Google My Business, chat, call, website. All of this is Google My Business, Google My Business. Then you've got my website. Again, then I just kind of scroll down here, Facebook, my other website. Then here I've got my posts. Now let's go keep scrolling down, Google my business, make an appointment, contact us, products, reviews, more Google. And then all the way down here, it gets to MapQuest, Better Business Bureau, Bright Local Agency Directory. So let's go back. You can see you're going to get all of this information here. And then I've got my website. Facebook is right up there at top. And then Google my business. Whoops, I went the wrong way and Google my business some more. So on desktop, you can, on phone, you keep messing up. On phone, you can see your Google My Business takes up a huge amount of space if you have it optimized. So make sure that you are optimizing your business to get found online. It's really, really important. So let's talk about the ranking factors. That's one of the things I wanna focus on today. Uh, looking at the ranking factors, is your uh, business getting found online? So first off, I decided, okay, let me, I have a new website. Let me search for a keyword, not my business name, but a keyword. So I did Google My Business Help in Marietta. And here I come up here in the search engine. So what determines then the local search ranking factors, the search engine results page? And I want to go over um, the 2020 local search ranking factor survey by WhiteSpark. So this was done last year and um, it was published online in December, I believe. And this is what I want to focus on because basically your local search, what makes you rank higher in the local search? And you can see Google My Business is 33%, reviews 16%. These two make up 49% of, of what the local search ranking factors survey. Google My Business, 33%. So that's why I say Google My Business is so expensive. You could see looking at it on the phone, how much space it took up uh, when you, someone searched and they actually put in um, the, they were searching specifically for my brand name. Now, I want to go over just first what's, because over time, things change. Um, and, and what has changed in recent years and the biggest shift in local search, and this is going to be what you're going to focus on. So uh, what you are focusing on 
six years ago isn't what you're focusing on now if you're looking at local search. So the biggest shift citations went down in 2015, 17%, 2020, 7%. Google My Business shot up from 15% to 33%. So that's a, a really, really big, um, big change there. And I wanna just briefly go over citations just so you know really what I'm talking about because a lot of people talk about citations, but as you can see, they have some importance, but they're not what they used to be. So for citations, what I'm talking about is your online uh, directories that have your business information, they have your NAP and then I add W, name, address, phone number, website. And it used to be get as many as you could get, not anymore. Um, now it is more, instead of getting high numbers, you wanna look at quality. So I, I talk with my um, customers and clients and I tell them, focus on three areas, focus on the, the, the top dogs. You've got Google, Google My Business, that's the biggest one. Facebook, Yelp, Bing, Apple Maps, Yahoo Local and Better Business Bureau. Um, all of these listings, they're free to set up. Um, now, the only time, of course, is when you need to optimize them and you're getting someone to help you. Now, um, Google My Business is the main one I would focus on. That's the one, 33% Google My Business. The others, just make sure you've got your, your information on them and it's correct. Um, and one of the things um, some people ask about voice search. So um, Google Assistant gets their information from Google. Siri gets its information from, of course, Apple Maps. Uh, Microsoft Cortana gets its information from Bing. Um, Amazon Alexa gets its information from Yelp. Uh, and so the one thing I hear a lot of is people don't like Yelp, and, and I'm in that crowd as well. But I will say uh, for that, just make sure you have your listing there. You've got your information, name, address, phone number, website. It's correct. Um, and then from that, move on. You can, I would also add some images to that. Um, but don't spend a lot of time on it. Google's your big one that you want to focus on. Local citations, if you are a member of any local business organizations. Niche citations, those are things that if... Um, Let's say you are a, um, a business, a, can I think of some? Um, you wanna find something like a real estate agent and you, you're on realtor.com, that would be a niche citation. Something that's right there in your specific niche. But other than that, don't spend hundreds of dollars a month on those citations. Get those citations and then move on, move on to what's really important for getting found online which is your Google My Business. Because I'm gonna be pretty mad if I find out that all that money every month that you're gonna spend on citations, you need to take that marketing money and put it into the things that are helping your business, which is your Google My Business. So again, let's go back and look at this um, on here where it's got Google My Business is 33% of the ranking factors. So what, what makes um, up that Google My Business? What pushes the needle on Google My Business? First off, your primary Google My Business category, and that's pretty much going to be set for what your business is. The only time I think that that would, um, that would change is if you're a business that maybe has a seasonal business, like let's see um, an air conditioned company in the summertime, and then maybe you would change it to a heating and air in the wintertime. But other than that, you're prob probably going to just be pretty much stuck with your primary category. Um, and that's just something that you, you'll just set and typically leave it. Um, there are some instances where you might change it here or there. Keywords in the Google My Business title. So that is something that's a, a bit of a hot topic because a lot of us SEOs um, don't like that Google puts so much emphasis on it because it means there are people who are going to go against Google's guidelines and actually stuff keywords in the business name. And that's against the guidelines. So um, I'm going to talk in a minute about some, some spam fighting on the map. But basically, um, your business on Google should be exactly the business name, 
that is your, your legal name and how you show up to the public. Next thing is your proximity of address to the point of search. So that's pretty set. You can't really do much about that. Um, the next one, your physical address in the city of search. Again, that's your address. You can't really do anything about it. The only thing is if you're in one city and you're getting most of your business from another city, it's going to be a big decision if you decide that you want to actually move your business. That's not something to be done lightly. Um, but that would be the only time you'd, you'd ever have that you might that might change. So these are things that are kind of set. Um, additional Google My Business categories, you can add up to 10 categories. Um, your primary one is the one that's shown. The additional categories are in um, basically in the back end. Um, you put them in, but uh, in Google, they come up when people you know, search for your business. Google knows that you do that. However, it's not shown to the public. And then removal of spam listings through spam fighting. So that goes back to number two and how I said that um, you need to use your business name as it is um, presented in the real world as your legal um, entity. But some businesses do use that to put spam in. And a lot of us SEOs go in and Report that to get that changed so that um, really, if you've got somebody that is above you or around you that is using on the map when they're searching for you and they've got spam, you really need to report that and get that removed because you really want to level the playing field. They shouldn't be getting all these customers simply because they're trying to gain the system. Completeness of your Google My Business listing, fill everything out, get it done. And a verified listing, that's something again that you just kind of um, you do once typically, um, if you do have an instance where your account suspended, you may have to go in and re-verify it, but you're probably looking at all of these things on here and saying, well, there's not much I can do about many of these. So how come Google is, is so high up there? You know, a, a lot of these things are kind of, they're kind of set, you know, you do the, the spam fighting, but there's not a whole lot of things on here. That, that you're wondering what would you do for Google My Business to then get found. So why, why the big focus on Google for a lot of searchers? It's not always about ranking, it's about conversions. And that's something I really try to, to stress because a lot of people want to, they say, well, just, just get me number one, that's all I want. Actually, you, you want the conversions. It's, it's about getting the rankings, but you want people to then convert and be your client. So how do you optimize your Google My Business to then get those conversions? So you're getting found, but you want to get those conversions. That's the really, um, really next important thing. So I want to go over the top um, 10 Google My Business conversion factors. These are things that basically it's going to mean that you're going to get the conversions. And number one, high numerical Google ratings. This is your star rating. Uh, what do your ratings look like? Uh, are they four to five or are they lower? Do you need to work on them? Positive sentiment in review text. So when people, um, when you're getting reviews, um, try to, to get some them to leave text in those reviews. Um, and again, positive sentiment in that review text, um, getting those positive reviews. That all comes down to basically your, your, your customer service and, and doing, doing, the, doing the job. So that part's on you, but then getting that review um, and getting that positive review, you've got to get that follow-up through. Quantity of native Google reviews with text, not just the star, but having um, the number of reviews. So a lot of times what I do is I look at my clients and I'll say, well, how many reviews do they have and how many do their competitors have? Make sure first thing is to make sure they're, they're at the same number as their competitors and then from there add on to it. So quantity. And again, this is not ranking, this is conversion. So a lot of people say, well, this isn't a ranking factor, but it's a conversion factor. Proximity of address to the point of search. Um, again, that's something that I talked about a minute ago, and you can't really do anything about that, that the person is searching, so where they are in rel relation to where you are on the map. Google My Business Messaging, just make sure you've got that enabled and working. Setting your hours in your Google My Business listing. Completing your Google My Business listing and optimizing it. 
the booking feature, making sure it's enabled, Google Post, making sure you've got lots of Google Posts, frequently posting them. Um, that's one of the things I work with with my customers and clients, making sure they've got those Google Posts. Um, and I'm going to share uh, something with you about that in just a moment as well. Then the other is comprehensive Q&A with owner seated frequently asked questions. So Google My Business has a Q&A section that you need to keep up with as well. But let's take a look at this. So the top three are all about reviews in Google My Business conversion, the top three. And if you go back and look at these, you've got the top three are reviews. And then this, you can't really do anything about. You enable it, you set these, you complete it. Then you've got Google My Business posts and frequently asked questions. So these are some of the things you really need to be focusing on every single week, every single month. Make sure you've got that plan in place and, um, and are getting those reviews. So let's do, one of the things I did is I went ahead in the maps and did a search. And you'll notice sometimes when you do a search, so I did Google My Business, it highlights and pulls in from a review text. And you, people will see that text when they're finding different, um, when they're looking for different businesses. Google pulls in the different text. So that's why having the good text, positive, and having those keywords in the reviews so that all comes down to just consistently asking for reviews and then just saying, you know, let me know how I did. Let us know how we did and make sure you, you put a little details about the specific service, what, what it was that you enjoyed about that. Next thing I want to show is these are the review attributes. So when you're Googling something and this comes up on the map, it tells you the different things that are mentioned in all the different reviews. So as you can see, your reviews are really, really important. Again, all this information is coming up for the Google reviews. Now, the next thing I did was I searched for, um, and I put this one because I was looking for different things. I did put this one in quotes because I wanted to get it to come up. Your website. So Google will say, if you search for something and it'll pull something, it'll pull things from your website. So that's why your on-site optimization is really important, making sure that you've got those keywords in your, on your website. Now, I talked about posts a minute ago. I was searching and I, I, did, I searched for um, virtual business card and I didn't use the, um, the quotes on it. And then this came up and I said, I know I've used this text, but it's not on my website. Where did I use this text? Well, I look over here and here was a post that I did. Here this exact text is. So not only when they're searching, does Google pull from your website? Google will pull from review text. Google will also pull from your posts. That's why it's really important. And one thing that has changed recently is that posts used to only stay live for seven days. Now they stay live for around six months. So um, it's really, really important to make sure that you're getting those reviews and um, that you're getting those reviews for your clients. Whoops, did I, what screen did I go to? I'm not sure which one I went to. Okay, so reviews. Again, they, um, they boost your brand loyalty, trust, expertise, authority, trustworthiness, social proof. Even if your business is a lot of referrals, you've got to have this information on there. So when people look for you, your online presence, um, you get selected. You want to make sure that your presence uh, online for your business is there so that you are the one that's getting selected because 87% of consumers read reviews for local businesses, 87%. And I want to say um, that was from the 2020 survey. And I think that it went up. The last one was uh, from 2019 was 82%. So it's jumped 5% in one year. Um, so that's really big. People, especially now uh, after COVID, people are really online checking out businesses before they head out to see, to find out about them, making sure they're still open. So make sure you've got everything um, on your Google My Business optimized. Reviews over three months old are considered to be stale by Google and potential customers. When you're out looking at a business and you see reviews, 
and you only see one review from five years ago. You know, so where, where are the rest of the reviews? Are they still in business? They need to be consistent quality reviews. They have to have, you have to have a review system in place. That's really um, not an option to not have a system in place. And I always like to tell my clients to have more than one place to get those reviews. So for example, when um, at the beginning of COVID, Google stopped um, showing new reviews. So you could leave a business reviews. However, you they, they weren't live on the map. They shut them down for a while, um, a couple of months, I believe. So I always tell my customers, you know, look, you, you need to have a couple of places. So two to three places, and it really depends on your business of what they are. I always like Google My Business, and then it depends on the business. Sometimes it might be next door, or it might be um, a niche citation site, if you've um, got those. Um, I, and typically what I do is say, thank you so much for your business. A few other things, and they'll say, please leave uh, a review on the site of your choice, and I will have links to them. And I've even had once um, someone leave it on all three <laughs> places. Now, I, I didn't um, tell them they had to leave them there. I just said, pick one, and they picked all three. That was nice. <laughs> but, um, but always giving up them an option. For example, some people may not have a Google account. You have to have that to leave a review, and they may you want to get that review. So if you don't, if they don't have a Google account, they don't want one, they may just not leave your review. If you leave, say, oh, well then, oh, we'll have a Facebook account. Okay, I'll, I'll leave one over there. So definitely always give them options for your reviews. So let's go over a couple of don'ts. And um, anyone that's heard me speaking has probably um, heard me talk about these before. Um, you want to make sure that you don't do what's called review gating. That's basically when you um, ask for review if, and say, you know, how did you like uh, our, biz our business, our service, whatever it was. And when they say they loved it, say, please leave us a review. When they say they didn't have a good experience, you don't ask to leave that review. You always, always got to, no matter if they say they had a good or bad experience, always give them the option to leave the review. Um, if you don't, that's called review gating. It could get your account into trouble. Review hopping, that's basically getting together with other businesses and leaving each other reviews. Google doesn't like that as well. Uh, it, they need to be valuable, honest, and unbiased reviews. So no incentivizing reviews. That includes contests. Um, and this isn't just about Google and the online places. Um, in 2017, the FTC, this is the government, went after a health food subscription box. Um, company and they settled for $100,000 uh, because of truth in advertising. They were get, paying people for reviews and not disclosing it. So it's not just Google. You might you could lose all your reviews from Google, but then also you could have the government coming after you. So that's a big, huge no-no. So all of these things with Google, what do you do for your reviews? The first thing is get that review system in place. First, um, if you see people in person, always, always ask in person. Uh, then have a system I set up with my clients, a full system that, that uh, as soon as they, they finish the work, it goes into the system and they get an email or text, however your business is set up uh, to request that review. And then if they don't leave a review, then they will get a follow-up email reminding them, hey, could you do us this favor and leave us a review? Most people do like helping small businesses and giving, leaving them reviews. So uh, a lot of times I'll say, can you do me a favor? I'm trying to, trying to boost my business on Google and I'd love a review. Most people are going to do it um, if you ask. And, um, and so definitely ask in person. If your business is uh, subject to HIPAA, that's the healthcare privacy. I'm not going to remember all the words to it, but basically in the healthcare industry, you've got to be very, very careful. So I tell clients to respond to all reviews and um, even negative. And with the negative, don't go and just kind of um, into a long rant about it. Just try to take it offline. And for, for healthcare, they cannot, when they respond to a review, they cannot in any way acknowledge that the person was a patient, even if they said that they were a patient. 
So um, with healthcare ones, I really like to just tell them to say, thank you for the feedback. Thank you for your le- the time to leave a review. And, and that's it. Um, but others definitely, um, if you're not subject to HIPAA, definitely add a little more to it and, um, and, and be personal. Um, I always like to include their name in the feedback as well, if I can. So some examples of businesses that didn't have quite control over their Google My Business account. So I had um, actually I've done a couple of businesses where they were marked permanently closed on Google, but they weren't permanently closed. Google says you're closed, you're closed. Here's what it looks like. Two places in Big Red. This is a business that actually is closed that I pulled up. It was a restaurant I really liked, so I was upset that they closed. But you've got two places. It's it's marked permanently closed. So if you're marked closed on Google, people are going to pull it up. They're not. They're going to just say, oh, they're closed. Um, so you definitely um, need to check and make sure that's not there. I had one that worked on their business. Um, They had several locations, they closed one, and then a couple of years later, they reopened that one. When they closed it, they did right, they marked permanently closed, they didn't think they were gonna reopen. When they reopened, they did not have control of their Google My Business, they could not figure how to get in and say they were open. So here they are permanently closed on the Google Map the whole time for over a year. And so um, when they came to me for help, I was able to get them open in one day. So how the other thing is you have to look at your Google My Business and see what are what's right on it, what's wrong on it, and how long is it going to take you to get it fixed? Um, if you're struggling with it, it's definitely something that you need to reach out um, and, and get some help on because that was a whole year that people thought that their business was closed. So you know that their business um, was was tanking because they they people didn't know that they were open. There's an, other things um, when businesses was suspended, not on the map for several months at the beginning of COVID. And again, you don't own your Google My Business, so um, at on that instance, it was something that um, right at the beginning of COVID, the uh, Google My Business their help basically kind of just stopped. And so we couldn't reach out and get that unsuspended at the beginning of COVID. As soon as their uh, help opened up, I was able to help them get back on the map. But it's really something you need to make sure that you're keeping up with um, and looking at your account and making sure it's optimized. I also had a client where her account completely vanished. That was an interesting one. She, luckily I was able to get her account back and get her reviews. Because that's a, that's something else. If you are not keeping up with it, what's going on with your account? When when did you last check it? And is it still on there? Is there something wrong that you need to, to reach out to um, and, and get resolved? The other thing that I like to co- tell clients is not to have a ton of users on your Google My Business. Um, a lot of people will, just nefarious actors out there, they will go in and try to hijack your listing. And if you have a ton of people on your, as a user on your listing, they may just, oh, this must be somebody I know, so I'll just go ahead and accept it. Um, no, you, you don't want to, um, you, the business owner needs to be the primary owner on the account, and you need to have control of the users on there. Another problem with that is a lot of users will, um, if, if you're the email address you're using as a user, if you're using that for um, Google ads, YouTube, any of the Google products, and you do something Google doesn't like, let's say you go over to YouTube and you, um, you run an ad and it violates their, their policy, or you write a comment that violates their policy and you get your account in. That can impact your Google My Business if that email address you used is a user on your Google My Business account. So it's really important to understand that. So as you can see, Google is not a set it and forget it platform. You've got to constantly, constantly monitor it, update it um, all the time. Google has guidelines. They've got lots of different nuances and you've got to keep up with those. Um, If Otherwise, if you're not keeping up with it, you could get your account suspended. You could have reviews deleted. You're spending all this time working on your reviews and then they get deleted because you did something that you didn't know you weren't supposed to be doing. 
So you definitely, um, as you can see with all the local search, everything is, uh, Google My Business is 33% and uh, reviews are 16%. I kind of blur the line between there because your Google reviews are in Google My Business. So you really need to work both of those. That's 49% of really your, your local search ranking factors. So I do want to, I'm gonna answer lots of questions. Hopefully we have some time for that, but I wanna um, give you all a chance to enter a, um, to a chance to win a free 30 minute Zoom call, ask me anything. The text number is just pull out your cell phone now and your text number is 66866 and you're gonna text the word watchdog. When that comes back, you're gonna just text, it's gonna ask for your name and email. Just send that in. You're gonna, everyone's gonna get my um, guide to the five biggest Google My Business mistakes, how to avoid them. And then one's going to win a free 30 minute Zoom call, ask me anything. So questions, and I'm gonna go back and put this back up on the screen and see if we have questions. I think I saw some coming in here in the chat, maybe. Melanie has said, um, what are your recourses for fake reviews? So fake reviews, that's something that can definitely be um, difficult to, to do. There is a process to report them. Um, and and the, the main thing with that is if you have proof, like can prove that they're fake, and by that, I mean, um, like, for instance, sometimes um, you can tell the, the reviewer if all they have done is, is um, all of their reviews you can see are, are fake reviews you can report that. Now, I will say that right now um, with fake reviews, Google is not good about removing them. Um, so the, I would say the biggest thing you need to focus on is, is focus on getting more positive reviews. If you have just one or two that you think are, are fake reviews, I would focus on getting more positive reviews. Um, there is, if you do have, so a lot of time, let's see, um, recently with um, all the things with social media and, and a business maybe gets attacked for something that you've seen like an employee did. And if you have something like that, you can reach out to Google and uh, see if they will stop your reviews and, and shut that off um, and, and get through that. So that's something that's a bit of a, a different situation than just a, a fake review um, here and there. So if you're getting maliciously attacked by these negative reviews, um, there's a process to, to request that um, in Google. So, um, let's see. Uh, okay, I see. Um, when a Google is set up by an employee who's no longer, how do you claim? So basically, um, Melanie, it, the, the answer to how to, um, Google My Business set up by employee, the owner never has um, ownership of it. How do you get that listing and claim it? And the answer is, it depends. Every situation is different. Um, that's something I, I work with my clients on. And, and I just basically have to look at every single account and, um, and see. And Andy says, depends on your relationship with the previous employee. Yes, um, definitely. The, the one thing is um, with that is, when you're asking them, are they going to respond? You know, what's going to happen? Um, or are they just going to ignore you? Um, so, so basically, it, it depends on on a lot of things. It just it basically depends. So, um, let's see. So Beth says, if you have a local presence, um, do I still need a Google? If you don't have a local presence, um, do you, you still need a Google My Business listing? So that, that depends too. So a lot of things as far as a local business, um, what is, you have to see if you're eligible for a Google My Business listing. And um, so I would be considered um, internet marketing agency. And so I am, um, that is definitely considered eligible for Google My Business. Mostly it is either if you have a brick and mortar store, obviously you're, you're able to, or a service area business, where you, for let's say example, um, you've got a landscaping company, they come to you, you don't go to them, so they don't have a physical location. Um, they are um, able to have a service area business. Um, for your instance, Beth, I would probably say 
that um, you you would because you would be considered like an internet um, um, online agency. So um, yes, I, I would say that you're eligible to have one. Um, there is a it's a little can be a little bit tricky on those if, as far as the service area, but you can kind of look at the different categories for Google and um, and see. Um, if, if you're listed in the category, if you're, if you're available. So Ray wants to know, is there a list of eligible businesses? There's not, I'm trying to think if they have a specific list or not. They, they are a list of categories. It's updated often. Um, there's not really like a list of eligible businesses. You kind of need to look and see if you um, fit in the guidelines. Um, and um, and and that's really just just the main way of knowing is is taking a look at the guidelines and seeing if you fit in that. Um, yes, good, Beth, good. And I think I missed. Let me see. Did um, you miss me? It's okay. Josh, yes, yes. Um, you will um, have been slipping uh, ads into maps with power um, with smart campaigns. So. Um, how are you working around these? So you're asking about um, with getting found on the Google map, how do you get around the fact that you've got all these ads? Well, yeah, if, 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 if I've, I've noticed a lot of these ads with, you know, within maps, how you how are you working around that? If you've had established listings, obviously the sure. Google ads are going to, like everything yeah. else going to bump you off, so. Yeah, so you do, there are um, Google ads and a lot of those are probably the local service ads. That's something um, a little bit new, um, the local service ads. But um, the main thing is getting optimized. And I will tell you something that's new that's come out. So usually when you search on the map, you have the three pack that comes up. Now there have been a lot of things where people are just seeing a two pack. So having your Google My Business optimized and getting up there is really important because you have those ads in there. So the main thing is really to make sure you're, you have an optimized Google My Business and you're constantly um, in there managing it, making sure that everything's correct and adding content to it. Um, that's the biggest thing. And then also spam fighting, making sure the com competition isn't doing anything to, to kind of game the system to get ahead of you. Um, that's a big one, um, it, it is working with that. Um, okay, good. And, and good, yeah, Andy um, posted a link to the um, Google My Business guidelines, um, which will kind of help you de determine with, um, with your business if you're eligible or not. But definitely, if you have a question, you're just not sure if your business um, is eligible for one, reach out to me and, and I can definitely take a look and see if that's something that um, you should get set up or not. Because some of them can be a little bit um, looking at it, trying to, to determine if you should, if you're eligible or not. Um, but I do have, I, I had someone come to me last year and said, I, I keep trying to get my Google, my business set up, but I haven't been able to, and I don't know why. And when I talked to her, she was a, an international business and she had no location. And I said, well, based on what your business profile is, the reason you haven't been able to is because you're not eligible for one. So um, I said, you know, you can try to game the system and get one, but all you're going to do is waste time and money working on it, and you'll probably have it taken away at some point. So um, Beth, if someone wants to hire me to manage Google, how does that work? Asking for a friend. Okay, thanks, Beth. So um, yes, um, and April, thank you. She posted my, um, my website in there, yourbizwatchdog.com. And I have the link. Here's my virtual business card, but um, it is um, uh, your biz watchdog and um, dot com. And then just you can book a chat with me um, and, and we can chat and see how we can help. I have listed on there my different services. I have several different levels of Google My Business that I help. Um, I have a I work with reviews, get a review system in place. Um, I also have a um, a management and then I do full management reviews and everything else like that. So um, Caesar has a question. How does um, Google handle business that are in a co-working space? What if I have two businesses that use the same address? Okay, so these are, are questions that people have um, a lot of. So um, first is co-working space. So 
A lot of times you're not allowed to use the co-working. You need to have a service area business where you hide your address. There are a couple of um, uh, exceptions. So the main thing is if you just use that to get your mail and maybe occasionally go in there for meetings, then um, you're, you have to hide your address. You, um, you can't, and you can't use that to verify. Typically, you just need to verify at your home address and hide your address. Um, the, the instance where you could use it is if you have um, a, if you actually have a physical office with your placard, your, your name up there, if you have that and you're, you have people there during business hours answering your phone, if you actually have an office that you're there all the time, not just a desk that you rent out here, there um, occasionally and, and might be there an hour a week, you need to actually be there. That's the only time that you can use it. And I'll tell you, sometimes you're probably going to have a little bit of a problem. You might have a problem with that because Google might see it's a co-working space and you might get suspended. Um, but you are able to have it if you do have space and you're there working at your desk there during business hours and answering a phone. Um, if you have two businesses that use the same address, it depends on how closely related the businesses are, um, whether you're going to have problems with it. The main thing, make sure you have separate websites, separate phone numbers. Um, obviously, different business names or different businesses. So, um, and so, Caesar, you can definitely reach out to me if you have specific questions. Um, we can go over to see. Uh, and then let's see um, a virtual business card, Beth. Yeah. So you can, um, and I um, reach, I've got that listed on my new website, uh, yourbizwatchdog.com. You can look at services, and I've got my information there on, the, um, on my virtual business cards. So, any I more questions? Have, I've been talking, talking, talking. Yes. I have one more question. Yes. So talking about reviews, um, how, what is your feelings on stock answers for reviews? Um, so I think that for stock reviews, so I do use, like I, when I do reviews, I kind of have um, some, some stock things that I use, but then I always edit it. Um, and it, it depends to them now if it's, if it's, if they're subject to HIPAA, I just have a stock thing. I might have four or five different things where it's just like, thank you you know that but if you're not subject to HIPAA I'll go in and have something in make sure I put the name in it so it's a little bit different and might have several different things that are different but then go in and say okay what service did they um did they talk about and mention that that service or what product um and um also just basically um I'm I, stock review review responses are okay as long as you change them a little bit so you want to kind of personalize them. Got it. Yeah. All right. But okay. I do like to have those kind of ready and set to, um, so that I'm not thinking, okay, so what do I even type? I kind of like have my re stock review, put it in there and then edit it. Yes, Andy says reviews have more than your competition. Yes, the, the quantity, well, even though it's not a ranking factor is a conversion factor. So look at your competition. What do they have? Get more than them and then just keep getting more reviews. So, so that's your first goal um, when you're looking at your reviews to see what your competition has. Um, and I'm, it's hard sometimes, um, you know, especially in really competitive industries, you know, somebody will come and say, well, I have 10 reviews and my competitor has 100. Well, just start working. If you, if you don't start, you're never going to get to where they are. So just start working and, 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 and make incremental goals. Okay, so I want to make, um, I want to do, yeah, Andy, <laughs> um, just, just start, okay, I want to get 10 more. I want to get, you know, 10, 10 more after that. So, um, so definitely just, um, definitely work, work on, just, just work it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, this has been really fantastic. Does anybody just have a question for Tricia? She's been so generous with her time today and knowledge. I love Thank how you. we're all learning from each other. That's yeah. what community should be, right? Yes, um, yes. And well, here is my information to contact me as well. And um, you're, on, are, you're on Twitter, right? Yes. And your that's your, watchdog. and you're at, at your biz watchdog everywhere? Yeah, yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you all so much. Yes, thank, thank you. you. And we will have, uh,
this video edited and up with transcriptions and everything. And thank you once again, Tricia. And we'll see, hopefully we'll see you all next Tuesday for our page speed optimization um, yes. session. And until then, have a good week. Bye everyone. Thank Bye. you.